How's it going ladies and gents? It's Flack. Here we have a VCM and probably no one knows about that and what that is. Uh, variable charge motion or variable uh, charge motor. And I've heard it called a lot of things but uh, this came off a LF series Sonata uh, which is the uh, 24 no 2015 to 2019 I think I'm not entirely sure um, but this did have an open recall on it they're they replacing them uh, recall or campaign I don't I don't remember exactly what but these are known for failing and this one has not failed but there's a uh, I've discovered that there's a second issue causing these to mess up uh, the linkage will actually rust right around there and then it seizes it up and the car throws a code and slash or then the gears inside this snap and then you have no VCM and then the car runs like crap so we're going to take it apart just going to look inside it real quick I think this is T10, but I have a T8, so let's see if that'll fit. Actually, it might be a T8 now that I remember. Hold on one moment. Yeah, it's a T8. By the way, I apologize if you can hear that fan running in the background. That is the, uh, what I call the Flacker Death Ray. It is a... Driver, dual driverless LED project I had made a while ago. Uh, I should make a video about that. I said that in a second video, but I don't, haven't made a video about it yet. But anyways, I right, started taking this apart as you can see. Go. Oh wow, I think this is a different part. Yeah, I think it is. I don't remember ever seeing this circuit board in there. I don't think I've ever seen that. This must be one of the updated ones. I do believe for the recall they had an updated one, but what I don't think they put into perspective is the linkage and this component starts to get rusty and then it starts seizing up and then the car's like, well, what the heck's going on? And then you get yourself a check engine light. But you can see just, it's actually pretty complex. If I remember, yeah, I do remember correctly. This gear, this uh, partial ring gear, I suppose you would call it, uh, the gear teeth would shear off. And once that happened, then it would click and the motor would cease to actuate the runners inside the intake manifold. Because all this does is it changes the path of the intake manifold. Uh, shortens it for uh, better, you know, uh, low end. or That's what I would suppose that they're doing. Uh, and then lengthen them for higher end, or it might be vice versa, or it might just be adjustable continuously. Uh, might be able to do that. But yeah, relatively simple. Just take out these gears. It's a very, it's a hard plastic actually. Let me get a knife. That's actually pretty hard. Now what is this? I'm going to take this off shot real quick. I see it says...
5 volts, it's an 8 pin chip, ground and out. These are two contacts, oh, that's for the electric motor, as you can see there. Oh, sorry, I don't even have it on focus. Whoopsies! Uh, yeah, two connections here for the little electric motor, which actuates that gear, which then actuates this gear, which then actuates that gear, which then moves the linkage around via this arm and opens and closes the intake manifold runners. Yeah, this is a, a much different part. You can see there's a nice stop there for that little half ring gear. And now that it doesn't have those gears, it's Wow, that's actually got a wicked spring on it. Where'd all this stuff come from? But yeah, and then it's all just a, only just an electric motor, a pretty beefy one at that. This thing weighs quite a bit. There. Yeah, quite interesting. Uh, I kind of wish that it was broken though, because when these break, they make this horrendous clicking, grinding sound because the teeth are missing, and well, basically, the teeth are doing this. Sounds a bit like that, except it's a it's in a hollow cavity, so it sounds a lot nastier. We also have a gasket here as well. You know what? Let's take that motor out. T ten. Nope. No, it's a T20. That's actually really hard to see. They're black screws, so I can't really see them all that well. Oh my. Yeah, there's the outer shell. That's basically all the components except for this one because I can't get that out. Nor do I want to because I can actually see the spring in there. You can just barely see it. You see that metal bit right there. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take that out because that spring is probably under a lot of pressure and I don't want it flying across the room or into my face. One day, Kaifco. Or Kefiko. This is coming off this front plate. Here's it mine. You know, this is I would consider this borderline rebuildable. Like if the motor went bad, just replace the motor. When the gears went bad, replace the gears. Uh, the only thing that would stop you from rebuilding this is this gear here which is integral to this or at least very hard to remove and I mean I guess you could just always get this plate as a uh, separate part as well there we go simple effective maybe uh, 
better designed as the first one. I'll try to find one of the first ones and we'll compare it to it. Thank you for watching. All right, I just looked up this chip. It is a 365 ABB linear position sensor IC. And I guess the other components are power supply for the chip. So there you go.